Ready, ready, riot? Riot's out there trying to kill chipmunks, which I'm not mad about because one went up into the engine compartment fleeing from her and then I had to scoot it out of there. The peppermint seems to really be working. We haven't had any rodents outside of that one chipmunk fleeing from her, so that's good. I've been traveling for about 11 months now and I feel pretty confident. But one of the things that I've always been fearful of is getting a flat tire and being out where AAA can't get to me or help might not be able to get to me. And uh, I learned to change a tire from my new friend Steve that I met in Arizona. And I'll put a link to that video below if you want to learn how to change a truck tire. He was really informative. Uh, that was before I had a camera, so it's not the best quality. I was just shooting it with my phone and it's real windy, but it's still a good video, I think, uh, from a tutorial aspect. So I learned to change a tire and I know where all my tire changing equipment is in the truck and uh, I have a big heavy duty jack and you know I have hands on practice with that but you know when I lived in Chicago I, th I think I averaged like six nail or screws in my tires every year um, <laughs> the thing is is you know you can limp your way to a tire place because they're like every half mile in the city uh, otherwise, you know, there's just help everywhere. Out here, there's not. And, and I find that I have a lot more peace when I feel like I have the ability to deal with something. You know, one of the beautiful things about this forest having a little bit more trash in it is someone ditched tires. So now I have a tire to practice with. I went to uh, Harbor Freight, which is maybe my new favorite store. They didn't have Harbor Freight back in Chicago or even where I'm from in Wisconsin. So the it's like it's like one of the most amazing stores I've ever been to. But at any rate, I got a Pittsburgh tubeless tire repair kit and I feel like one of the best ways to be prepared is to practice. It's like what Yoda said, you know, fear is a path to the dark side. And one of my things that I'm really trying to get over uh, through traveling is any of my fears or kind of hang ups in life. And now that I have four additional tires pulling the trailer, I feel like the more confident I am between changing a tire, patching a tire, um, and just general other maintenance things, the better off I'll be and I won't go to the dark side, that place of anxiety and that place of fear. Because that really, that, that's not a fun feeling, uh, as many of you know. Even though today might be kind of ridiculous because I don't know what I'm doing and I feel like I'm kind of putting myself in a vulnerable position doing this for video, uh, I figure there's got to be other people out there that also don't know what they're doing and there's some really good tutorial videos and those are the ones you should watch if you really want to learn how to do it properly but I figure you guys can come along and see me do my best and then also if any of you have done this in real time you can share your experience in the comments um, because I get to kind of fart around here in the forest with it but you know sometimes I think like if this happened on the side of a highway uh, you know what would your reaction time be? How did it go? You know, different safety measures. One of my biggest, I guess, fears, and sometimes, you know, it's almost like it has to happen so you can just get over it, is is being on like an incline, like driving through Colorado or something on one of those two lane highways. And you have to like pull over and do this, but there's not really a pullover area. You know, I worry about those things sometimes. 
and I try not to, but I do. And so practice will hopefully help. Obviously, these are skills that I hope to never use. Like, I want to be very full of skills that I never have to use. Uh, one of my missions is also to learn more about the truck. I hope I never have another breakdown, but, uh, you know, I want to be prepared if I ever do, at least to the best of my abilities. I think that's especially important for females. Like, even if I just have the knowledge base when someone comes to help me, I feel like it's easier to not get taken advantage of if you have some intelligence behind the situation, even if you're not remedying it yourself. Like, for instance, when my DPF filter broke in Minnesota, um, and I had to go get it repaired. The mechanic was <laughs> kept repeating himself that he was very surprised that I had the knowledge base I did about the whole diesel particulate and exhaust system. But I try and have that knowledge base so that I was not able to be taken advantage of. Not that I think he would, he was so nice, the mechanic. Um, and we got it taken care of in the same day. But that level of preparedness reduces my anxiety. So yeah, silver linings to people leaving their trash all over is uh, <clears throat> now I get to practice and I have a plan for this tire that I'm hoping to make another video off of uh, that should be pretty fun for the remainder of the time that we're in this area, which is uh, like another week or so. Apparently they're not enforcing the stay limit because of COVID, so... I might take advantage of that, especially because work is now postponed. Work is postponed until tentatively the middle of June. So may as well take the sheriff up on uh, their non-enforcement, I suppose, because it's real cool here. I have to say this lifestyle is very satisfying to my inner pyromaniac. Now I'm a person that likes to be in the know as much as possible. Again, I think information and skill is a huge solution to my anxieties. And I don't really have many anxieties. You know, I'm like 11 months into traveling full time and I've been through some things. <laughs> I've been through, you know, a few things like the DPF filter uh, cracking and needing to get it replaced on the first day. Yeah, that was the first day. That really sucked. And for those that don't know, if you don't have a diesel, a new DPF filter is like $4,000. So that really sucked, especially being the first day of my travels. But I, I, I think it's a win because it didn't discourage me and I had prepared financially for it. Not for that particularly, but for, you know, in case at any rate. And then, you know, my low pressure fuel pump went out on the highway in um, New Mexico. And it's kind of scary being, you know, at like 70, this is before I had the trailer. So I was going like 75 miles an hour. Uh, and, you know, <clears throat> in a Ford, all of a sudden it goes into limp mode <laughs> and you don't have power and you're trying to get over to the side of the road. And then, you know, waiting for AAA to come tow me and people are zooming by super fast. Something that I think is when you can try and pull over for people, you know, pulled over to the side of the road, like go into that other lane because it really sucks having people fly by you when you're waiting and already a little bit, you know, unsure of what's going on. I had that happen. And then, of course, we had the grizzly bear in Montana come right into our camp. So, you know, I feel like I've already been through a lot of exciting adventures. And the one thing that I've always discovered is people are so nice and willing to help. Um, after living in Chicago for so long, I feel like being on the road has really restored my faith in humanity. <laughs> uh, sorry, Chicago. But, you know, 45 people got shot in Chicago last weekend. So I feel like I have a little causation to say that. Uh, also, the taxes went up again. I just... I can't imagine moving back there. I digress. <clears throat> My point is, is that I think having as much information as possible is super helpful to having more confidence in what you're doing. I do again, 
Uh, I do again think that this is particularly important for females. Yes, we can be just as empowered, but you know, knowledge is power. So I looked up some things is, is the thing. I, I think that these are important things when it comes to tires. These are things I did not know. Uh, so hopefully they help someone because I think that's a large part of me making these videos anymore is especially for for women if you're solo I don't I would hate for anyone to feel fearful that's such a horrible feeling so you know sharing knowledge there's B the kit that I have says for tubeless tires and so and maybe this shows that I'm dumb I hope not but I go what's a tubeless tire and I came to find tubeless tires have continuous ribs molded integrally into the bead of the tire so they are forced by the pressure of the air inside the tire to seal with the flanges flanges to seal with the flanges of the metal rim of the wheel tubeless tires on cars and trucks and pretty much anything automotive became standard in about 1900 as they're safer. You find tube tires in like bicycles. So pretty much if you buy a kit that says it's for tubeless tires, your car is going to have a tubeless tire. I mean, I don't think, from my research, I didn't see that there were any automotive tires that had tubes in them. Oh, that bee is right up on me. Okay, it went away. Good. Oh, oh it's back. Just be cool, man. All right. Uh, a plug is supposed to be a temporary fix until you get the to a tire place for a proper repair where they patch it from the inside as well. And so if you just plug it like what we're gonna practice, I'm gonna practice today, that's supposed to just kind of get you to somewhere proper. Unless you know how to patch it yourself, they do make kits for that. I don't feel that I'm necessarily at that level, but skill development is that, it's development. So maybe as time progresses and I practice different things, I'll get there. But really this is just supposed to be to help you kind of limp somewhere to get it done properly. Maybe not limp, but you know, get somewhere properly. But it's not supposed to be driven on long term. Uh, when you have it properly patched from the interior as well, that's when you know your tire should last you several, even hundred thousand miles afterwards. So I also read that you should not plug a tire if the puncture or the issue is in the sidewall here. There's too much strain and pressure when it's driving and so it could result in a blowout you should really only plug it if it's in the tread here that makes contact with the road and i can say i actually have experienced that a few years ago again it was in new mexico um, i was driving back from i used to take a cross-country trip once a year because i love traveling um, and i could get away once a year because I conjoined it with a conference I went to every year in Nevada. So I drive from Chicago to Nevada and try and take some extra time. Anyway, and I was driving back in, through New Mexico and I had a, uh, a, a low tire and I stopped and I filled it and then I kept driving and then it just blew the fuck out uh, on the highway. And it was kind of fun because <laughs> Uh, the sheriff that stopped, he saw me pulled over, it was like 10 o'clock at night, it's like pitch black. And the sheriff that stopped to help me out was actually from Chicago. He had moved there a few years ago. Uh, and his mom still lived in Chicago, so we had a good chat about it. And he helped me change the tire for my spare. And uh, I had to wait in, oh, where was I? Well, I was on the west side of New Mexico, right by Texas, and I can't remember the name of the town but it was a little town and I got the last tire that they had that fit my vehicle in that town. As a reminder this is not a tutorial this is more of a watch someone learn something and try and be kind about it in the comments if you can be please. So the first thing we probably should do is put an actual screw into the tire. Now, in my research of this, some people said that you should take the tire all the way off in order to do this, and then other people said that's not necessary and you can leave the tire on the truck or the trailer. Um, 
I think maybe that would depend on where it's located, where the puncture is located. But this tire is obviously already off because I found it a couple miles into the forest, which was a great workout hiking it back here. Like backwoods CrossFit. Although this isn't a very heavy tire at all. All right, so we have our puncture. Now the kit I got is this Pittsburgh tubeless tire repair kit. It says it works with most tubeless tires. It includes plugs, cement, a hook, a reamer, and a knife. The next instruction is to find the location of the puncture. And if you're not able to find it, I read that water can help, kind of like when you're checking uh, for a propane leak, the air will make it bubble. Once you find it, they say to mark it with chalk or a paint marker. I don't keep chalk or a paint marker with me, although maybe that's a good thing to keep in your toolbox. Otherwise, they say to use some tape. The only tape I have is black duct tape. So I'm going to use a band-aid to mark where the screw is. And they say not to take the screw out yet, so I won't. And I'm going to use the band-aid to mark right under where the screw is. The next instruction is to actually remove the screw. And then I suppose we should open the actual repair kit. I am not a fan of blister packaging. I suppose I should keep the packaging somewhat intact or I'm gonna have to get like a storage bag. They do have nice kits online. I'll put a link to one I found on Amazon that I really like and it has a case to it which seems like it would be quite nice. The next step, they say, they being the internet, is to ream out the hole, which would be this tool, I suppose. And it's supposed to rough out and prepare the area, which makes sense because also uh, the screw I used was smaller than what the plug will be so I guess I have to kind of almost expand the hole to make sure that the little plug fits in. Such a nice day today. What a good day to practice plugging a tire. I appreciate all the life skills I'm learning while I'm out and about. It's nice if you know you can survive in a city or in the woods. I'm just moving it back and forth because I already made the hole bigger. So I'm able to just kind of get it in there and out of there. Um, this would be different if the tire was in here, I'm sure. Again, this is not a tutorial. <laughs> this is not a tutorial. I am not teaching you. I am learning myself and you're just watching me. Why, I don't know, but you are. Thank you for watching me. <laughs> Please be kind in your critique, because I have a feeling that, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I, I'm very aware I don't know what I'm doing. Right. Well, I've reamed it several times, so I feel like we should be ready for our next step. So in here, these are the little plugs. Rubber cement. I just read the warning on this and you're not supposed to swallow it. So don't eat the rubber cement. Well, they call it a knife, but it's really just a razor blade. I bet this is for after you plug it to cut the ends of the plug off. There's no instructions with the kit, that's the thing. Which again is why Google is so helpful. 
All right, I guess these things are called worms. I don't know if maybe they weren't supposed to be in the sun because, yikes. This is the plugging tool it came with. You're supposed to thread the worm, oh, they're so sticky, through this tool. Oh, it's like so sticky though. And this is why you practice though, cause, cause you imagine trying to figure this out on the side of the road or something. Nope. All right, starting to pull through. So from my understanding, you're supposed to pull it through like halfway. I think I understand. So this tool has like a little divider on it. So you're supposed to jam it in and then pull it up and then probably there's enough pressure from the sides of the hole that it yanks the worm through this part to create your plug. I suppose let's find out. All right, let's give it a try. Oh, I don't think I reamed it enough. It doesn't want to go in. This is why I'm practicing because if I had to do this for real, I would probably be if, like upset, you know? And I hate that feeling when when you feel like you don't know what you're doing and you're trying to figure it out and there's like pressure of time or the urgency of a situation. But this time also your tire's probably flat if you're me because like I know I saw a video where someone was so quick reacting that the tire didn't even really lose air. They're obviously well versed in what they're doing. Ugh. Giving it a good ream job. Anyway, if you can't entertain yourself, who can you entertain? All right, let's try this again. Why doesn't it want to go in? Do I just need more pressure? This is so much harder than I thought it would be. This is going to be really embarrassing to rewatch and edit. Holy fuck. I'm not going to edit this very much because I think it maybe will be helpful to someone else that goes, I don't know what I'm doing and it's totally okay to not know what you're doing. It's the point of developing a skill. And I would say that this is a skill. Holy smokes. I don't know you guys. This is embarrassing. All right, it's about halfway in. I think now I'm supposed to pull this straight out. I do remember that it said not to twist this thing out. Let's see if I can do it. All right. And the little plug is on the inside too. Okay. And then this must be where you use this jobber. I'm not sure where the rubber cement is supposed to come in. I didn't see that in any of the online tutorials that I watched. Here's my little plug. There it is. From the so probably not the cleanest, the quickest, or the most efficient tire patch, but uh, at least I'm learning and it goes to show you that the more skills you develop, like I feel more confident, I have to say. Even just doing it the once, I'm gonna try it again off camera. You you guys really got to see me blunder. It was my very first time ever trying that. Um, <laughs> but I, I do feel more confident even if I just went forward with the one uh, attempt at patching a tire. And that tire patch kit uh, that I got at Harbor Freight, it was only $4.87. So for less than $5, uh, the peace of mind of traveling with it is very heightened. But then also, now that I've practiced it at least once, I'm going to practice it again. You guys don't need to watch every attempt that I 
make, but um, it's very confidence building to have the practice. So if you're in an area of forest or elsewise where you can get a tire to practice on, I would highly recommend it. Um, I feel really blessed that someone dumped their tire. See, silver linings and everything, guys. Once the tire is patched, obviously, it's going to be low on pressure. Something else that I've been saving up for and finally got was a better air compressor. When Steve taught me to change a truck tire, again, the video link to that will be below, even though it's not the best quality, I realized that the air compressor that I have been traveling with is really insufficient. And so I've been traveling really slow to save my money because work is delayed till the middle of June. Hopefully I can go to work, otherwise I'll be looking for other jobs. I've been, I've been traveling slow so I can save more. So uh, I bought a better air compressor. So something else that I thought we could do today in this video is an unboxing. This is the new air compressor I got and I feel automatically more confident having this because the other one that I had would not inflate my truck tires and would take a long time. I actually did use my air compressor once. One of my tires was low when I first picked up the trailer. I thought that the dealership had filled them all but I was driving and I just said, you know you gotta always trust your gut. I had this weird gut feeling that um, like an hour outside of Denver where I picked the trailer up from, I, I felt like I should, I should check the tire pressure. So I pulled over and I checked the tire pressure and one of the tires was really low. That like They must have missed filling it. So, uh, and the truck stop that I stopped over at, their air compressor was broken. And so uh, I had to use my air compressor and it took forever to get it up to, uh, proper PSI. This one is like the same one that Steve had I think in the how to change a truck tire video and uh, it goes up to 150 PSI which is much more than what my truck, my truck usually I keep at about uh, 70 and then the trailer tires are supposed to be at 50 so I keep them just slightly over 50 um, and this says it fully inflates car tires in three minutes or less which is great, especially if you had to use it like on the side of the road or something. Although if I was on the side of a proper road, I'd probably call AAA. Uh, you know, what's the point in paying for that service if you don't use it? Because there is a certain level of danger in doing these things on the side of a road. Especially if you have <laughs> my skill level, which is why I'm practicing. So let's unbox this, huh? Okay, so... Seriously? That is a big box for just this. All right, so let's see what we got here. In our front zipper pocket, we have our long hose. And in this little pocket here, this must be the valve stems and whatnots. I feel like a beauty YouTuber. You know how they like hold the lipstick or whatever? Okay, we have, the, the thing is they're not called nozzly dudes, are they? Oh, my blonde is showing. I would like to just say again, and I'm not sure how many times I can repeat this, this is not a tutorial. This is a, this is what I'm doing today. All right, we have the owner's manual and the safety instructions. All right, and here we go. So again, in the video where Steve taught me to change a truck tire, we learned, I learned, about clamping these onto the battery. So I feel like I already have a good head start about where we're going with all this. I don't see any other freaking way. All right, I'm gonna have to actually read the instructions. I don't know why, but I have like an aversion to reading instructions. Oh, it's like that, ha ha ha. All right, see, I didn't really read the instructions. I like full read the instructions. There was too much in there. 
But see, tinkering works. So you pull this back and it exposes that and then it snaps together. Ha! See? You don't really need instructions. You just need a little bit of tinker time. Okay. And so we have the pressure gauge. This, I always like these that screw onto the tire. Apparently you're supposed to turn it on before you screw it to the tire to prevent any um, blowing of fuses. Okay, and then over here we have the actual fuse, which was that little purple thing in the baggie, and we have the on-off switch. I hope I never have to use any of these tire repair things, but the reality of living on wheels is that you know just like a foundation of a house or something you know every so often you're gonna have to deal with it I know that uh, come fall I need to have my tires on the trailer rotated and the ball bearings repacked and the hubs lubed so I'm I'm determining whether I want to try and learn that myself or have it done i think i'm gonna have it done properly if anyone here particularly if you know a place in oregon where they will that you really trust if you know a place in oregon that you really trust for trailer maintenance leave it in the comments below because i am going to have to find a place because i think the first time in particular to have the hubs lubed the bearings repacked and the wheels rotated I prefer to have a professional do it I might always prefer to have a professional do it um, but I would love a good reference so if you have one please leave it in the comments below and I should be in or I'm hoping I work Ugh. I'm supposed to buy my solar system with my work money so I really hope that I work uh, but I should still be here through October provided our economy reopens here in Oregon and so that is my new air compressor I hope you enjoyed unboxing it with me well guys I want to thank you for joining me in my learning experience I hope you got something out of today's video if you did please like and subscribe and until next time, have a riot. Does it look like my ass is on fire? Or like the smoke is like fart steam? Oh, Lord. <laughs>